Okay, let's just uh, get started. <clears throat> uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Eris Katz. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Lucena Research. Uh, welcome to Lucena Research. Uh, we are a leader in software solutions for the investment professional. Um, very excited to uh, be with you today. Uh, I'm joined by uh, two of my colleagues. Um, my co-founder and the CTO is uh, Tucker Bolch. He will be uh, presenting uh, the majority of today's presentation. And I'm also joined by, uh, joined by John Coulter, who is our EVP of sales. Uh, he'll be moderating today's presentation. See, uh, by, by applying uh, scientific methods to financial data analysis, uh, we have developed a highly sophisticated, yet easy to use and affordable solution for small to mid-sized investment firms and other sophisticated investors. Uh, Lucena levels the playing field by enabling our customers to exploit market opportunities with precision and scientifically validate investment strategies before risking capital. Now let me uh, pass the microphone to my co-founder uh, and CTO, Tucker Bolch, PhD, so that he can lead you through today's presentation. Um, I'm uh, Tucker Bolch. I'm a CTO here at uh, Lucena. I'm also a uh, professor at Georgia Tech and uh, really excited uh, to be uh, working with my colleagues here at Lucena and, and be able to um, provide you this technology. Um, quick overview of the uh, topics we're going to cover. Uh, introductions, we've told you some about us. We're going to provide an overview of uh, Quantum Desk, our product, our cloud-based product. We're going to have a live demonstration of that, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, so thanks so much for, uh, for joining us. Now, before we uh, dive in, um, we have to cover a few disclaimers. Um, we're a technology company. We are not um, investment advisors. Um, do not invest uh, any funds you can't afford to lose. And if you're unsure about, uh, about that, um, please contact a professional investment advisor. We're going to show you um, uh, some statistical-based uh, methods and algorithms. Uh, do not assume that uh, these approaches are profitable. And uh, finally, the, uh, the numbers we're going to show you are hypothetical. They're based on uh, simulated performance. And uh, as such, uh, there's no assertion uh, that, uh, that uh, they are correct. Um, the market is a big data problem. There's at least uh, 13,000 equities uh, traded actively in North America. If, uh, if you consider that each one of those equities um, represents at least uh, 120 technical and fundamental factors that we look at each day, and there's 252 trading days per year, uh, that adds up to a lot of data really quickly. Uh, so if you're just looking at five years of data, that's uh, 1.96 billion data points. And it's a nearly impossible task for a person to wade through that and to find patterns and understand uh, how to manage their portfolio in the most effective way. So that's where uh, QuantDesk comes in. Um, QuantDesk is big data analytics. It helps you cut through this clutter, cut through this uh, huge amount of data. It's a cloud-based service. That means you don't have to install any software on your computer. It runs within a browser. And it, uh, it incorporates state-of-the-art data mining based on statistical machine learning. Um, so we've been spending years actually building these statistical methods uh, so that we can present them in this cloud-based service to you. It helps you hone in quickly on market opportunities um, and also uh, methods for making portfolios you have even better. We use uh, the uh, most uh, most well-known, robust, and trusted uh, financed algorithms all integrated with this statistical machine learning. So how does QuantDesk help you? 
So it augments your alpha. In other words, uh, we assume that uh, you as a uh, trader or a portfolio manager, you're bringing an insight to the table. Um, you're driving your portfolio. Uh, you're able to um, choose stocks uh, on some basis uh, that are going to provide uh, enhanced return over time. What we help with is we bring uh, quantitative tools to the table to help you fine tune that portfolio. We can uh, reduce volatility while preserving return. Uh, and we improve uh, major performance metrics like uh, sharp ratio, volatility, and drawdown. The key here is um, we're augmenting what you do. We're not uh, trying to drive your methods. We're trying to enhance uh, your already successful approach. There's uh, five key products, a price forecaster, a portfolio optimizer, hedge finder, uh, event studies, and back testing. There's uh, three of these are available right now. Um, and we'll go through them uh, right now in today's, uh, in today's demo. Uh, and those are the price forecaster, optimizer, and hedger. Coming soon in the beginning of next year, we're going to roll out the event study and back tester. Okay, let's, uh, let's dive into the, um, into the price forecaster. Um, so the, the price forecaster uses technical and fundamental statistical models to create five, 10, and 20 trading day price forecasts. You can see an example uh, forecast there on the right. This sort of uh, triangular shape uh, shows the, the forecast and it's surrounded by upper and lower bounds of standard deviation. The benefits are that uh, this, this leverage is uh, state-of-the-art machine learning uh, directed by you to find market opportunities. And this approach is unique to the center. So uh, when you um, when you start uh, when you start our product, it, like I said, it's a web-based product. Uh, you'll be provided a um, uh, login name, which is an email address and a password. And this represents the uh, products uh, available along the top. And when you uh, log in, you're initially uh, brought to uh, the Portfolios tab, which uh, shows you portfolios uh, that you have entered. Uh, you can also create new portfolios. Uh, you can upload them, for instance, or enter them symbol by symbol. We're going to go ahead and jump to the Forecast tab. And for forecasts, you can, you can look at uh, forecasts for individual equities within your portfolio, or you can look at larger lists. For this demo, we'll just uh, quickly look at, uh, at Dow Jones. Um, so uh, when you when you click on a system list, there you're you're, you're seeing the uh, symbols that make up that group. And you can click on individual equities and see their chart below. Uh, we also provide uh, technical information and also uh, fundamentals uh, that you can look at for each one of those equities. Um, okay, so let's get now to the uh, to the forecasting. Um, we use a statistical machine learning, and uh, what that does is it builds a predictive model uh, based on your guidance. Uh, so we have 120 technical indicators and uh, also fundamental features that you can use in this model. Now let me show you real quick, uh, if you wanted to build a model, how you would do that. So we'll name this uh, test model. And uh, down below here, you can browse through the, the different indicators that are available. Um, let's say, for instance, that uh, you believe uh, Bollinger Bands are predictive and should be part of, a, part of a model. You can click Add and add that to your model. Let's say you, uh, you like RSI. Uh, in this section, then, we show the, uh, we show the features that, uh, that you've selected and that you think are predictive. And you can tell us how important you believe they each are to a model using these, these sliders where you set their, set their weights. Uh, once you're done uh, configuring that model, which can include um, as many factors as you believe are important, and again, these can be technical or fundamental or a combination of the two, 
uh, you save that model and we can then use it for forecasting. We also provide, you know, lots of people want, you know, just tell me what the best model is. Uh, we also provide a default model that, uh, that does that. And uh, each week we tune that model uh, to, to find the, the best features. Um, here you can click here and see what, uh, what those combinations are. Okay, now once you've uh, selected a model, uh, and essentially that is which factors uh, you believe are important, um, you can then choose to uh, forecast out, uh, let's, uh, let's choose uh, two weeks, and you can look back uh, on, at different time scales from one month to one year. And what, uh, what that aspect does is it, it, it tells the system how much data, how much historical data do you want to go into the model. Um, sometimes it's better to use just more recent data if the market is changing rapidly. Uh, other times uh, folks like to use uh, further look back. But uh, once you've selected that model, our number crunching goes to work and we consult that uh, model for each equity. And uh, we, we present the results in uh, two ways. There's a tabular representation uh, where for each equity uh, we, we can uh, we show you forecasts of how much is it's going to change. Um, and a, a really nice feature is uh, we, we share a confidence value where five stars is most confident and one, one star is uh, least confident. Uh, so you can sort by any of these columns. You can sort, for instance, by which uh, we think are going to change the most in either direction uh, or by uh, confidence. So we're, for instance, least confidence confident in TRV. Uh, and then you can click on individual equities uh, and uh, you see the forecast down here graphically. Uh, you see how it's performed historically. This uh, vertical blue line here is now and this uh, sort of triangular section going forward is the forecast. That center line is uh, how much we think it's going to change and the upper and lower bounds there are standard deviation uh, representing essentially our uh, certainty uh, of that change. Okay, that's um, that's the forecaster. Um, so this is uh, again statistical machine learning, uh, and we um, I mentioned that we build models, you know, according to your direction. Uh, but furthermore, we um, we build many models. Uh, each model uses, uh, for instance, the features that you think are important, but uh, we group equities together um, in 10 groups according to uh, how they move together. Um, so as an example, that, uh, that graphic on the right uh, shows how uh, our system can segregate equities into separate groups according to how similar they are. So that ensures that um, the model, the data that goes into a model is from equities that perform similarly. You know, so for instance, uh, financials probably act more similar to one another uh, than they uh, react uh, than, than technology. So we group technology stocks together, financial stocks together, and that makes the models better. Once, uh, once we have these groups of equities, uh, like I said, we can consider up to 120 quantitative metrics. Uh, a very nice feature um, that we can provide is the ability to use not just our technical indicators and fundamental measures, but uh, proprietary time series. Uh, so if, you're, um, if your firm or you personally have uh, your own specific uh, metrics, we can integrate that into our system as well. It turns out that uh, the sweet spot for a number of features to use is about 10 to 15. So we, we have an automatic method for finding the uh, 10 to 15 best quantitative measures, the ones that when uh, put together make the highest quality forecast. So that's an overview of uh, Forecaster. Let's, uh, let's now uh, take a look at uh, portfolio optimization. So what portfolio optimization does, and it's, it's an important part of, um, it's an important uh, quantitative uh, technology for well-run uh, funds, is it helps you determine how much of your assets you should allocate to each equity. So if, uh, if you tell us, okay, these are the five stocks, 10 stocks, uh, that I want my funds to be in, uh, we can help determine what is the optimal allocation to each of those equities. 
He uses a uh, Nobel Prize winning method uh, due to uh, Harry Markowitz. Um, and there are others that uh, offer uh, portfolio optimization. It's called mean variance optimization. What's unique about us is, uh, well, first of all, ours is very easy to use. Um, and second of all, we uh, integrate our machine learning with it. So you can take advantage of the forecast uh, to refine your optimized portfolio. Um, now, um, let me uh, dig a little deeper into, in, into how this uh, works. Um, of course, a portfolio, you know, you've heard diversity, diversity, diversity. Um, and what that means is you want uh, stocks that um, react uh, differently each day to the market. Um, and uh, you might think that uh, when you build a portfolio, uh, well, first of all, let me, let, me, let me start by showing you this uh, chart, which is a, a way to view each equity that's in your portfolio. Um, so each equity has its own characteristic risk and its own uh, forecast return or historical return. So you can, you can graph all these equities on a chart like this uh, to assess them. Now you might think that when you build a portfolio by combining them, that your portfolio will have, say, a risk return uh, structure, say, somewhere here in the middle. But the, uh, the insight that uh, Harry Markowitz had and that we take advantage of is that um, you can, in fact, build portfolios that have lower risk than the average of your equities. Um, in fact, uh, potentially lower risk than any of the equities um, individually. So here's an example where you create a portfolio by weighting uh, these uh, six equities. And your, the, the risk return profile of this new portfolio is actually, as you can see, uh, lower risk than even the single lowest risk equity and uh, higher return than uh, most of the individual equities. And this is possible because the, the, because the optimizer looks at forecast return. It looks at how the stocks move together. That's called covariance. And it also looks at their individual volatility to build that portfolio. Now, there's many portfolios you can build, uh, one for each uh, target return. Here's another one. And in fact, uh, something that Markowitz showed, what he got the Nobel Prize for, was to show that uh, all of these optimal portfolios lie along this line called an efficient frontier. Um, and uh, our portfolio optimizer delivers these optimal portfolios along the efficient frontier. Um, and there's three important portfolios along there. There's one which is the maximum return, which tends to be actually a higher risk, of course. Another is the minimum risk portfolio, which of course provides the least volatility. And finally, there's a balanced one that is somewhere in between. And uh, we allow you to choose between those uh, three options when you're optimizing your portfolio. So let me show you that, uh, that uh, let me show you an example of that with our system here. Um, okay, we'll go to the uh, optimize tab. And we're going to um, start with a portfolio that has uh, four equities, uh, um, a, a bond ETF, gold, the S&P 500, and an oil fund. And it's, uh, these are all about equally weighted uh, in the portfolio. Uh, so we're starting with you know, equal weights to each of these. And uh, we'll now see what the optimizer uh, recommends with regard to potentially a different weighting. Uh, so all of our tabs uh, have the similar uh, layout. You, you choose which uh, portfolio you want to work on over here. Um, and uh, then you uh, set up the settings you want for the particular feature. So uh, we, can, um, we can create long and short portfolios. We can also create long only or short only portfolios. Uh, so that's, uh, that's an important option. Here's where you set your risk level, whether you want uh, the lowest volatility portfolio balanced or something that provides a maximum return. The look back period, which you can set, is uh, how far back should we look uh, uh, in terms of historical data to find uh, covariance and volatility and so on uh, to optimize your portfolio. Sometimes you want to look back only a short period. Sometimes you want to look back longer period. What uh, 
What's unique to us and is very important here is uh, one of the most important inputs to the optimizer is where do we think these equities are going? And you have three options here. You can use a historical average, which is the, the, the classic method. You can use our forecaster, take advantage of the statistical machine learning, or you can enter your own sentiment, which way you think uh, each equity is going to go. Uh, for this example, we'll go with the historical average, and I'll click optimize here. Now let me uh, make sure everything's sorted correctly. Uh, up here is your portfolio before optimization and the weightings. Uh, here below, you see the recommended weightings after the optimization. Now, uh, one thing to note here is uh, it, um, uh, it's recommending um, a strong investment in uh, AGG. Uh, remember, we selected uh, minimum risk, and it, it turns out that uh, of those equities, uh, AGG is one of the lowest uh, volatility. Uh, it actually wants to uh, short oil um, because it's observing uh, recently that it's uh, going down, and we allowed it to be a long and short portfolio. Uh, let's look uh, now at the, uh, at, the, at the chart representation. This blue line is the historical performance of the portfolio before. And again, you also see a forward-looking cone here of the forecast and standard deviation. Uh, now, after optimization, you can see that uh, it's much less volatile. It provides about the uh, same return. And in terms of uh, forecast return and volatility, it's uh, substantially reduced. Over in this panel here on the right, uh, we highlight the aspect that we were uh, seeking to uh, optimize, in this case, uh, volatility. And you can see we provide a portfolio that's about half as up. Half, half as uh, volatile with a very similar return. Now we can, we can try uh, different methods, just um, try balanced, which, uh, which is seeking a balance now between uh, return and volatility. So the, uh, the volatility is still about the same, but uh, note that the return is higher and uh, the sharp ratio is, uh, is more than double for this uh, optimized portfolio. Okay, that's uh, portfolio optimization. One of our um, <clears throat> really unique offerings, uh, and uh, we're not aware of uh, anyone that uh, uh, has something uh, similar to this, is our hedge finder. Um, the, way, the way this uh, part of our product works is um, you give it a portfolio. It's a fixed portfolio. It, you know, you want to hold these equities. Um, but we can ask the system to provide a, a basket, an additional basket of equities to add to the portfolio that uh, will uh, reduce uh, downside risk and volatility of your original portfolio. Uh, this, again, also exploits uh, statistical machine learning. And the, the hedge is customized uh, to your particular portfolio. And again, this is unique to Lucena. Um, uh, one thing to point out is uh, a couple things. Uh, we um, we hedge uh, using equities. It's not based on options. Uh, we find that uh, that provides actually uh, uh, a um, lower cost method of hedging that also offers um, uh, return. So some you know typical uh, hedgers actually uh, take a significant amount of uh, re you know return out of a portfolio. So, and, and we're finding that we're able to offer reduce volatility, and preserve return. Uh, here's a little bit of the uh, underlying science of how that works. Um, uh, in this case, uh, we're trying to build a hedge for this red equity, which actually is the Dow Jones. Uh, and this vertical line here represents now, or when the system is allowed uh, to, uh, or it indicates a boundary of you know, where it's allowed to learn and do a statistical search. So we look back in time and uh, what we do is we try to build a portfolio uh, using our algorithms that uh, reproduces the best hedge. So what is the best hedge? Well it's this black line here that is as you can see 
it's a mirror of the original equity. Um, it's flipped around the, uh, the trend line of where the equity was going. We have an underlying technology called portfolio replication that when we give it a time series, it's able to search over thousands of equities to build a basket that reproduces uh, that target portfolio. Uh, what we find here, we can't always match it exactly, what we found here is represented with the green line. Uh, now we simulate uh, here entering that hedge and going forward you can see the, the Dow had a significant drop um, but our hedge reacted positively and the uh, net result here shown in blue provides um, a much better overall performance. And we can create tuned hedges like that for, um, for any sort of portfolio. Okay, let me show you uh, how that works with our product. So again, we go to the um, hedge tab, and we'll uh, we'll look at this uh, look at this uh, same portfolio. Um, again, you you choose the portfolio that you want to work with here on the left, um, and now there's some controls for the hedger that are available to you. Um, one of the first that's uh, very important is uh, we call it the uh, white list. And that's the list of equities that the system is allowed to use to build the hedge. Um, in this case, we're using the uh, Russell 2000 and then a few uh, ETFs. But you can, uh, you can edit this uh, white list as you see fit uh, to add uh, other major indices or specific symbols that, you, uh, that you'd like to use. There's another uh, list called the black list which are specific equities you do not want it to use. So for instance, you might not want to use um, ultra leveraged uh, ETFs and you can add those there. Um, okay, uh, now uh, one thing that's uh, really nice about the system is um, we offer not only you know, short only hedges, which is what most people think of when they think of a hedge, we can actually generate long only hedges, um, which uh, that, might, that might sound odd, but for many applications, uh, like trying to reduce volatility in an IRA, uh, people are only allowed to um, buy, are only allowed to go long. Um, so we can uh, we can find appropriate uh, instruments uh, to hedge even in a long only situation. For this example, we'll go with the uh, long and short. Uh, look back period, uh, similar to the optimizer. How far do we want to look back? Uh, there's two more important uh, parameters here. Um, one is, uh, we call it target beta, which is how reactive does the hedge need to be against the core portfolio. So this isn't beta against the market. It's beta between the hedge and the, uh, and the core portfolio. Uh, finally, you can choose um, what percentage of your portfolio should be allocated to the hedge. So in this case, we're going to go with uh, 50%. But you can choose to use a smaller percentage. Let's say you went with uh, 33%. Uh, in that case, um, you would want your beta to be higher uh, because only a third of your portfolio is allocated to the hedge. That hedge needs to be more responsive uh, to, um, to respond to market changes. OK, let's go ahead and run the hedge. Um, so. Uh, Again, we, we present um, the original portfolio uh, in blue there. Uh, the new hedge portfolio is in orange. And as you can see, we've got uh, uh, reduced volatility and actually um, uh, improved return. And uh, we also provide a uh, forecast cone. Uh, again, uh, we're looking at the reduced volatility uh, in the forecast as well. Uh, I didn't mention, uh, here's the, here's the uh, recommended hedge, the original portfolio, and then the hedged portfolio, which has new equities that have been added. Now let's say, for whatever reason, uh, you've, uh, you did not want pharmaceuticals in your hedge. Uh, you can click uh, Remove, and it'll remove that uh, equity. And you'll see it's been uh, added to the blacklist over there. And it'll um, it'll rehedge. It takes a little bit of uh, time to build the hedge. Um, remember, it's looking uh, it's looking at uh, over 2,000 equities simultaneously, and 
considering millions of portfolios uh, in order to build that uh, build that hedge. Okay, that's the hedger. And uh, that's um, that's uh, completing uh, our uh, technology overview. Um, let me hand it back to Ares. Okay, so uh, thanks. That was uh, that was very. Uh, uh, hopefully, everybody got uh, a good uh, value out of this presentation. Um, you know, this is obviously an overall high level. We would like to hear from you later on. Uh, suggesting maybe other topics you'd like to cover, maybe more in depth, or other permutations of what we have uh, discussed today. Uh, I want to just uh, bring this to the uh, website that is a great tool to go and find more information about us. We have uh, been updating it uh, perpetually, and you can sign up for a free 30-day trial by clicking on the top right button, as indicated here on the screen. In addition, once you signed up, there's no credit card. There's no need to uh, pay anything. Uh, we want to try to show you the buy before we uh, engage you on a on a more permanent uh, basis. The my account, the link that you see here below the red arrow, uh, gives you access to our web portal. Uh, at the web portal, you'll have access to three uh, main documents: the quick start guide, it's a PDF document; the user's guide, a little bit more in depth. Um, you know how to with regards to using our platform and at the bottom you'll have another document called the web portal document which obviously presents additional features on our website that are not part of Quantesk. Um, so that's pretty much uh, you know what I wanted to share with you on the on the website. Thank you um, thank you Tucker. Um, well this is uh, pretty much uh, concluding our session today with a very nice turnout of uh, attendees today. We'll reach out to you or feel free to reach out to us. We will, as I uh, mentioned before, create additional webinars that will cover some topics that are uh, more specific to our technology and to the overall needs in the market. And uh, looking forward to hearing back from you and uh, seeing you again on the next webinar from Center Research. Thank you very much.